one year ago today on October 1st, 2020, Star Wars Squadrons was released. That's right, one whole year already. I've had this video planned for like over a month as I do these annual videos each and every year for all Star Wars games, but I honestly could not believe this game is already crossing that one year landmark. And I think it's fair to say that Star Wars Squadrons did not leave much of a mark on the Star Wars game space in the year that it's been out. When you think of EA's tenure of the Star Wars license, you immediately think of the Battlefront games, Battlefront 2 specifically, or Jedi Fallen Order. But this little game called Star Wars Squadrons, yeah, it's there too. And we're going to talk about it today. But before we get into that, we do have a quick sponsor for today's video. This video is brought to you by Idle Firefighter Tycoon. Now, Idle Firefighter Tycoon is a very casual simulation game that is great for curing boredom and enjoying a little bit of downtime. Now, this game has an idle feature where even if you are offline, the game will continue to work, generating you in-game money for when you come back. They have just launched Live Ops, so players can compete in weekly in-game events from Mondays to Sundays, where you can build up your own fire stations during the events. Now, you can play in two cities with three challenging fire stations each, and additionally to fire trucks, you can upgrade ambulances as well to help fight emergencies in your cities. The game has also received incredible new visual upgrades with FPS increases and modular buildings, so the game is visually looking great. So be sure to check out Idle Firefighter Tycoon through the link in the description below. The channel would be absolutely screwed without sponsors, seeing as how dead Star Wars games are at the moment. So be sure to check them out, and a big thank you to their support for the channel. So anyway, I thought I'd do what I do with these annual videos for Star Wars games each and every year, and take a look back at Squadrons from its early days as a concept, to now, one year later in 2021. This is the story of EA's forgotten Star Wars game. Now this retrospective annual release video that I do for these Star Wars games every year, I've done one for Battlefront 2015, Battlefront 2 and Jedi Fallen Order last year. Those three games have one thing in common. I love all three of them. Squadrons on the other hand, not so much. So I'm going to try my best in this video to not tear the game apart as the game does do a lot right, it's just not personally my kind of game. And it seems that that was the case for the majority of people. So let's kick it back to the start of the pandemic in 2020 when this game to the public eye was nothing more than a rumour. Battlefront 2 was absolutely flying, EA were riding the coattails of their best months with the Star Wars license in over half a decade. Battlefront 2 was becoming the game that it was always meant to be, and player numbers were through the roof. Jedi Fallen Order came out to universal success both critically and financially, like things were going really, really well. Then when the pandemic hit, Battlefront 2's live service came to a screeching halt, basically leaving Star Wars fans with absolutely nothing. Flash forward a couple months, and rumours of a Star Wars flight sim began to swirl more and more. Then in the wake of a huge leak coming out, all of a sudden a teaser trailer was released for Star Wars Squadrons. Motive Studios were bringing to life a Star Wars flight sim, the first of this new era of Star Wars games. It was revealed that it wasn't going to be a full AAA game, instead it was going to be a smaller $40 title with no microtransactions, something purely for the player. A smaller title that pleased the fans of the old LucasArts flying games that are beloved by many. This, I guess, was EA's answer to that. Now, it was interesting upon the release of this game as Motive actually joined forces with Criterion and DICE for Battlefront 2. So it was interesting to see one of those three studios that worked on Battlefront 2, you know, the big daddy modern Star Wars title, go off and make their own thing. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Now, fortunately for me, I was actually able to get my hands on Star Wars Squadrons months before the game came out thanks to EA. And my initial reactions were... It was great, it looked incredible, the gameplay was in-depth almost to a fault, and it was without question to me the best flight-orientated Star Wars game I've ever gotten my hands on. But it was made clear to me that the novelty of all of that does wear off, and it wears off very quickly. As good as Squadrons is as what it sets out to do, you have to be a certain type of player to get caught in the gameplay loop. I wasn't one of those players. The best times that I had with Squadrons was maxing out the graphics settings and just flying around in circles. That alone was worth the price of admission for me, but obviously, like I said, that wears off. And it seems that it was the same, if not similar, for most people. Now, initial reactions to Squadrons were mixed, to say the very least. And some, and I think most people here, were just angry at the idea of this game being the quote-unquote replacement of Battlefront 2, even though that wasn't really the idea. 
but it certainly felt and looked that way. Now, regardless what side of the fence you were on, the trailers didn't really do anything wrong to make you think you couldn't at least give the game a chance. After all, the graphics looked great, and there was going to be a campaign, and the gameplay looked like it was going to be fairly in-depth, and there was going to be various multiplayer modes. So some people were inclined to give it a shot, and the common consensus when the game came out was that it was a super immersive flight sim, one of the best Star Wars had ever produced. But it just got boring really quickly. And I got to agree with the common consensus there. That's pretty much exactly how I felt. Now let's talk about the campaign for Squadrons. Now look, in the four EA Star Wars games that have come out, out of all the campaigns in those games, they haven't exactly been great. Battlefront 2015 did not even have a campaign. It had a few single player missions with AI that had the mental capacity of a gonk droid. Battlefront 2 did have a campaign, but it was very, very mixed. It betrayed its main premise and was super predictable, but it did have some standout moments that I look back on and actually really appreciate. And Jedi Fallen Order was, I mean, it wasn't really a campaign. It was just a single player game in itself, and we all know how good that was. But these campaigns within the larger multiplayer Star Wars games from EA, they haven't been very good overall. And Squadrons definitely, at least in my opinion, did not help with that like in the slightest i would still prefer battlefront 2's campaign by a mile i mean i can't even actually tell you the names of the new characters in the squadrons campaign and i'm actually not even taking the piss like for comedic purposes for the video i actually cannot remember anyone in that campaign that isn't harris and Dola because i already knew who she was that's how forgettable the campaign was like it wasn't a terrible campaign it just wasn't anything interesting or memorable the campaign length, I found it to be, you know, okay, but I mean, it kind of dragged on for me, so it probably felt longer than it actually was. But it just felt like in the Squadrons campaign, you were doing the same thing every single mission, just in a new location. And granted, the locations were great and looked incredible, but that's all there really was to it. Now, as for the multiplayer, this is what most people play this game for at the end of the day. If the campaign sucks, but the multiplayer is good, most gamers would probably give the game a thumbs up and say no harm done. And the multiplayer is definitely Squadron's strong point. Fleet Battle says what it does on the tin, and when you squad up with friends, it's actually kind of fun. But if I jump into it by myself, I get bored very quickly. Having said that, it is pretty awesome flying alongside these huge Star Destroyers and cruisers in first person. Regardless of what you think of the game, you have to give motive credit here where credit is due. They nail the immersion and the scale aspect of this game, of being that fighter pilot in the cockpit. You really feel like you're there. So whether the gameplay is for you or not, at least you can enjoy that. Dogfights is the other main multiplayer mode. It's just a basic TDM mode with Starfighters. To be honest, I don't think the style of this game complements that format very well. But if I were to stick to multiplayer in this game, it would 100% be in fleet battles. But one of the main things this game did really, really well is the Starfighters themselves. Whether you're in an X-Wing, an A-Wing, a TIE Fighter, or a TIE Interceptor, or one of the many other ships in the game, each of them have their own unique quirks and features that make them usable and helpful in battle. Me personally though, I always stuck with the X-Wing and the TIE Fighter because I'm boring as batshit, but I still had my fun. Now it does seem that the game has pretty much died out. I struggled to find games of fleet battles and dogfights in preparation for this video, and to be honest, that did not really surprise me. So for me, even if I wanted to, there isn't really much left here for me when it comes to this game one year on from its release. So when I look back at Squadrons, it's a real mixed bag for me. On one hand, you've got an immersive Starfighter game with incredible visuals and deep gameplay mechanics. And on the other hand, you have a game that was just released at the wrong time. That just doesn't do enough to keep casual fans engaged. It's really hard to sit here and crap on Squadrons because realistically, the people that made the game didn't really do a whole lot wrong. I just think the timing of this game's release was absolutely terrible. Like if this game had have released alongside an alive and kicking Battlefront 2, then I think the general consensus toward the game would be much more positive, and the game would have more active players still. Fact of the matter is, whether it was the intention or not, this game had to replace Battlefront 2, and it just couldn't do it. And that sent a lot of people the wrong way with this game. And because of that, I think it was kind of doomed from the start in terms of having any kind of longevity. 
Granted, Motive really did try to keep things ticking with this game with a few free cosmetic updates and updates including a map ripped from the campaign, as well as some new Starfighters, but ultimately, it all ended up lacking at the end of the day. And not to mention, no Clone Wars. I just think no Clone Wars content for this game was just a huge missed opportunity, and apart from original trilogy Supremacists, I think this game's reception would have been just way better if it focused on that. But looking back on Star Wars Squadrons a year on from its release, I think we can all feel like we didn't actually get a Star Wars game last year. It honestly feels like the last Star Wars game that we actually got was actually Jedi Fallen Order back in 2019. Squadrons just kind of felt like a DLC expansion or something. But I am glad for the people that this game was specifically catered to. I'm glad you had your fun with this game and still continue to, but for the majority of people, Squadrons was just not enough. I think Squadrons was definitely the right game, just at the wrong time. And I think that's the defining story of this game. So guys, what do you all think of Squadrons? Have you been enjoying it this past year from its release? Have you even played the game? I'd love to know down in those comments. Also, be sure to drop a like on this video to help get it out there, as Squadrons videos tend to do absolutely terribly on YouTube. For some reason, Squadrons videos have always gone to the darkest depths of obscurity on this platform and no one seems to care. But for those of you who are here, keep an eye out as I will have similar videos coming for Battlefront, Battlefront 2 and Jedi Fallen Order very, very soon. But that is going to do it for me today. Thanks for watching and have a good one.